Okay, hopefully I've recovered now. I'm sorry about that. I don't have good control over my emotions. There's a lot of things to say about this section of history that, you know, in the, la the increment before last, I said I didn't know what this next section was going to be about, but now I do, rather dramatically. So I'm going to try and explain it first in a sort of um, academic manner so I can get control over my emotions and you can understand the, the issue at hand for you. Okay, this is 2061. This is when, you know, by 2041, the apostate Christians get wiped out. And by 2061, the terrorism is going to go back underground. It's not that it never is going to happen again, but the severity of it and all the rest of it is going to, you know, close. Because that's the way it always happens. It's 400, every, about, it's not, Satan can't quite get them to swarm exactly on the 430 year mark. But every 430 years, he gets the, the Muslims to swarm. Not all Muslims are bad. A lot of Muslims are converting to Christ. So you don't want to just paper them with, you know, and say, well, if you're a Muslim, you got to be bad. Don't say that. God is using these kinds of things in order to get Muslims who really want God to find out who he really is. Okay, and a lot of them are. I mean, the, the number of Muslim conversions is, is spectacular. And he uses periods like this to do that. So every 430 years, he gets the Muslims to swarm to try to take over the world. And when I say he, I mean Satan. And then for 120 years, God lets them play. And the 120 year, you know, actual historical proof is something that you can just go through history and look up. But that's actually a doctrine in the Bible called the four-generation curse. And a guy who observed Arab history was kind of puzzled by it, but he didn't call it the four-generation curse because he wasn't thinking about Bible. He's in love with Islam. And the guy's name is Sir John Glubb. He wrote a really excellent book that I had to read in college 40 years ago. And you can still get it in Amazon. It's called A Short History of the Arab Peoples. And in his appendix, he talks about this four generations that the Arabs kind of they swarm and then they go down after four generations and he thinks it's really odd that that happens okay well it's not odd that it happens it's biblical and here's when it's next going to happen because we're in the middle of it now 2061 okay now Millennials is a term that's used for people who were born between 1981 in the year 2000 okay if you were born in 1981 or a lot before 2000 then you're going to be in your 80s at this point you're likely to be in your 80s by the way because people are living longer now much longer than they used to and whether there's a war between now and 2060 is pretty likely so you know a bunch of people are going to get killed and since this could be your kids it's going to be kind of important to know Assuming that you survive and assuming we fight war smartly because there's a smarter way to fight war now that we're learning how to do Then you're likely to be alive at this point and your kids will be in their 60s because they will have been, if you were born in like 1981 by about 2000 if you got married you were like 19 and you had kids now a lot of Millennials don't didn't marry so you, you, they marry later, maybe their 30s or their 40s, so then your kids would be a lot younger. All right, but if you're a millennial who was like born in 2000, by 2060, you're going to be 60 years old. Now, the people who are in their 60s, 50s, 60s, tend to be in control of the world all over the world. So it's going to be a pretty important time. And it's the millennials who are basically going to be in political power during this time. So it becomes important to say, okay, well, what is this section of the Bible about? And why is Brain Out freaking out over it? And the simple answer is two-thirds. Two-thirds of you will be growing up spiritually, and one-third of you won't. Two-thirds of you who are Christians. We're only talking about Christians here. What is the percentage of Christians to the total population? Well, who knows? But the big thing that the Bible stresses is of the people who are believers, who's growing, who's not. Back up here, 
remember? Or maybe you don't, maybe you're coming into this new. This is ten virgins, okay? Five of them were foolish. The five foolish virgins are wrecking the election right now, right here at the first QDA. Saying, let us in, let us in. Yeah, because they think Donald Trump is Lord. Okay? They're wrecking the election. But really for everybody in other ways, too. All right? They're going to die off by 2041. Okay? So then what about the next crop of believers? Well, that's you. And you're going to be in your 60s to your 80s right here. And this thing is talking about, all right, the, the warning here is, you know, you never know when this is going to happen because the rapture can still interfere with all this. But if it doesn't, if you're still here and the rapture hasn't happened yet, you're supposed to know what time it is. That's the whole purpose of prophecy. Okay, so this verse in verse 14 is starting for you, starting in 2062. The beginning of verse 14, Matthew 25, 14. And I'll just translate it for you so you don't have to look it up. But if you look it up, this is what you'd find. It said, it's just like a man, and this isn't any old man. This is Christ. In Greek, when they wanted to say any old man, they have something called an article in front of it. But that article is not here. So it's talking about Christ. A man gives to his servants. His own, see this word here, it means his own servants. That's believers. We're technically speaking, we're the servants of Christ. All right? So it's just like a man who, on a, just before he's going to go away, he gives to his own servants. All right? And he's given to his own servants. He's giving to, to one of his servants a bigger amount of money, spiritual growth. Okay, five. We we'll just call that level five. And to another one, he gives one, two. And to another one, he gives just one. All right? And the rest of the parable, you can read it in English or whatever is your favorite translation. <clears throat> From verse 14 all the way to... Um... Let's see, where do we stop this thing? Hold on. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, here we go. To verse 30. So from here until verse 30. Okay, verse 30 is ending at um wow. That's how big a period of history you're gonna affect. Until twenty six sixty two. So from 2062 to 2662, what you do now is going to affect history for that long. Okay? It's a big deal. All right? It's a really big deal. That 600 years of history is going to be determined by what you grow and what you learn about God now. Okay? And of course, that's true for us, too. You know, I'm in the baby boomer generation, but I'm, you know, I'm 63. I'm going to be dead within 20 years, probably. Maybe 30. Maybe I'll live longer. My people tend to live in their 90s, but you never know. Okay, God will kill me when he kills me. But for you, this is going to be applicable. Christ gives to his own servants, <clears throat> you know, as it were, money to invest, spiritual money to invest. To one, he's going to give five. That means that some guy's going to grow bigger. To one, he gives two, and to one, he gives only one. And if you go look at the story in Matthew 24, 14 to, to verse 30, where it ends. See, because it's ending right here. Um, you'll see very quickly, you know, in your favorite translation, that basically what happens is he leaves, he comes back. All right, just look at the storyline first. He leaves, he comes back, 
And the guy who got the five right here, all right, the guy who got the five doubled the investment that Christ made in him. The guy who got two also doubled the investment that Christ made in him. But the guy who got one, he was bitter. Oh, I'm just going to bury, I'm just going to bury what my Lord gave me in the ground. Because my Lord's a nasty person and I, he'll get mad at me if I lose it. And then Christ comes back and the guy who made the five said, oh, Look, your investment doubled. <clears throat> and the guy who got two is not jealous of the guy who got five. He says, Oh, your investment doubled. And the one who just got the one says, Well, I know you're a hard master and you're nasty. You know, that's down here. I know you're a hard master and you're nasty, so I just hid it away. So here's your own money. And then Christ says, oh, really? I'm just this nasty person, huh? Okay, now notice that. You have three servants in the story. Okay, one, two, three. Two-thirds of them are productive with their master's money. One third of them is negative and nasty. Now remember, these are all believers. These are all saved people. Okay? So that means your generation, your kids, and your grandkids are going to affect the next 600 years. Because the parable ends here. Next 600 years. Which means, the way, I mean, it take me a long time to show you the Bible verses to prove what I'm telling you. But you should be able to get that from other sources or just ask God to show you the verses. When Christians are positive to God, there's prosperity in the world. When Christians are negative to God, there's um, adversity in the world. And what basically happened after World War II is that Christians, see, this is, this is 1950 where it ends. This is where World War II began. Christians became positive to God as a result of World War II. And by the end of 1976, had started to go negative. Okay? And the, that's why Christ is saying that, you know, you got, you got ten virgins, half of them, half of them are negative. Whereas down here in your period, okay, starting here, two-thirds of you, are going to be positive two-thirds so my generation half of us are just in the tank but the other half is not the other half did not politicize a fetus the other half decided you know what we're just going to learn and live on bible yeah that's what you're supposed to do and out from the half that was learning and living on bible and not politicizing comes you guys and two-thirds of you will be even more productive than whatever you can say about us. That's what's the story here. Okay? And that's why I'm shocked about it. Because, personally, I, I didn't know the purpose of my life. I didn't care about it because, well, I get to know God. That's all I ever wanted. But, see, I do have a purpose. And the guy who is a millennial who found this passage... Kept telling me, you know, look at this, look at this, it's a timeline. And I kept saying no, because I was being stubborn. He was right, I'm wrong. Here are the numbers, they prove it. And these, the same style of counting syllables in order to tell future history is all over the Bible in every single book. Starts in Genesis 1, okay? As I showed you in earlier increments, the Genesis passage, okay? That same style that's in Genesis in the Hebrew is right here in Matthew. And what Christ is focusing on is how believers impact history. When the salt is salty and when it goes saltless. We're in a saltless period right now. Where the political power is being, you know, aggrandized by the Christians who hate God. And they make up all kinds of lies, like pretending that, you know, a fetus is human. Okay, that's a big lie. The Bible says in Genesis 2-7, you're not alive till you're born. God gives you life, nobody else. And you don't get that life until the fetus is out and on the ground. Genesis 2-7, go look it up. And you guys, you millennials, 
you will be looking it up. Two thirds of you will be actually learning the Bible. Okay, and learning it well, not just a little bit. Okay, you're the stars of this story. Okay, five and two, and then one third of you will be jerks. That's better than my ratio for my generation. My generation is 50% of us are jerks. And I think I'm a jerk all the time, but I guess not, because I'm learning and living on Bible. Not very well, but I'm learning and living on it. doesn't say you have to learn and live on it. God is the one who makes the investment work. And so for you guys and your kids and your grandkids, you're going to be two-thirds productive. So when we're all dead and we're all standing before the Lord, you guys are going to be the stars of the show. Now, I haven't justified what I'm telling you. I'm just trying to give you the overview. And um, I don't know where I'm going to go from here, but I needed to give you that heads up because it's creeping me out. You guys are more important than everybody else in history.